Hey, in today's video, I'm talking about the truth about cholesterol. Does it cause heart disease? And what do we need to look at? Well, we probably all heard that cholesterol is at the root of the development of heart disease, in particular, the bad cholesterol, LDL particles. However, new studies have come out showing, for example, in asthmatics, that LDLC, the bad cholesterol, actually that lower levels were linked with an increased all-cause mortality rate, meaning those with the lowest levels of cholesterol actually died early in asthmatics. So let's talk about what cholesterol does, why it is so absolutely critical for our health, what are signs that you know our, our overall lipid panel or cholesterol panel is not looking good, and what may actually cause problems with cholesterol metabolism. So when we look at cholesterol, particularly LDL, bad cholesterol, we know that cholesterol is this substance that's really important as far as the backbone for hormones, things like, particularly sex hormones like testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. So we know that LDLC, when the body needs, for example, more hormones, it's going to increase, right? When we need more testosterone, more estrogen, more progesterone, for example, if we're trying to heal from some sort of major trauma, we need more of these building sex hormones and therefore our cholesterol may go up. Also on top of that, it's very important for vitamin D production, right? So we need vitamin D, it's also very important for bile production so we can emulsify and digest fats and absorb fat soluble nutrients. It's also really key for cell membrane stability. So the stability of all the cell membranes. And so if cell membranes become damaged by oxidative stress or inflammation, we should expect, because we need more cholesterol being trafficked out to the, the, the cells to repair cell membranes, we should expect our LDLC to go up. And then finally, cholesterol plays a really important role and actually in getting rid of, it has an antimicrobial factor. It helps get rid of bad bacteria and bacterial toxins and other toxins, even things like mycotoxins. In fact, one of the ways it does that is it sequesters it and brings it into the bile. And so if we are exposed to a high amount of mold or mycotoxins or a high bacterial load, or we have bacterial infections in our system, we should expect our LDLC to go up. And I think that's actually what's going on with these asthmatics. So this study, June of 2024, it actually showed that it was with 3,300 people and it showed that those with the lowest rates of LDL actually had the higher rate of, uh, of all-cause mortality. So they died early, it was a five-year cohort study. And on top of that, what they showed was that for every one, one uh, point increase in overall LDL, one point increase, it reduced the risk of mortality by 17%. So the LDL was actually protecting these individuals. Now, why is that? Because we know with asthmatics, these are individuals that are dealing with chronic inflammation that's affecting their lungs. So what's happening? What's actually at the root of that inflammation? Well, most likely there's leaky gut, there's high bacterial load in their bloodstream and high endotoxin or LPS or endotoxin, which is a fragment of the outer cell wall of certain types of bacteria, that can drive up inflammation in the body. It's a really potent driver of inflammation and that's also gonna cause an increase in the LDL. Now that increase in LDL is actually a protective factor because it helps bind to that bacterial toxin to make it less inflammatory for the body. So the, actually the LDL is working to help bring down overall inflammation, which would be why these individuals with asthmatics, my hypothesis at least, why they actually live longer when they had more LDLC. So if your LDL particles are elevated and your doctor gives you a statin drug to lower LDL, that actually could cause you to have more, ramp, more problems, right? More problems with bacterial toxins, more problems with overall toxicity and not able to, to deal with infections, not able to uh, produce the right amount of sex hormones so you can heal properly, not have the right structural stability in your cell membranes. And so this can be a really, really big factor. In fact, there are certain bacteria like Staph aureus, for example, and with Staph aureus, um, you know, we know that that particular bacteria can cause a lot of different problems in the body and we can develop antibiotic resistance. We've heard of MRNSA, MRSA um, which is uh, antibiotic resistant Staph aureus. 
And so we know that basically those individuals that are taking statin drugs to lower their cholesterol actually have an increased risk of developing antibiotic resistant staph aureus. And so it can be a really big problem. Also, the LDLC, the LDL particles will actually help to lower uh, the virulence or the severity of the problems with things like salmonella, which is oftentimes a foodborne illness that individuals can have. So anytime you're, you have an inf a high infectious load or a high toxic load, your LDLC actually should go up as a protective mechanism. Anytime that you have high amounts of oxidative stress, let's say you are a smoker, this is why smokers have higher amounts of LDL. When they're smoking, they have more oxidative stress, more damage to the cell membranes, and therefore there's going to be more LDL because LDL is actually like a bus. It's actually bringing these cholesterol molecules to create stability at the cell membrane to repair the cell membrane. It's also bringing antioxidants, fat-soluble antioxidants like vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin D, vitamin K2 to the cell membrane so the cell can heal properly. And so it's really important that we get enough of those buses to bring the cargo to those cells. So super key. Um, you know, there's been other studies, like for example, they looked at COVID-19 patients and they found that those with the highest cholesterol levels had the lower rate of uh, mortality. And those with the lowest cholesterol levels had a higher risk of having overall morbidity and mortality, meaning getting a more severe disease and dying from COVID-19. They also looked at individuals, another study, um, this is June, 2023, and they found that LDLC, lower LDLC, increased mortality. So just trying to lower your quote unquote bad cholesterol, your LDL levels, the research is showing that that clearly is not what we wanna do when it comes to increasing our lifespan. Instead, we should be thinking, what is actually causing our LDL levels to go up? Now, there is a pattern that we wanna look at. In particular, we call it the terrible triad. This is something that actually is really bad and we need to be aware of. The terrible triad is when we have very high LDL as well as low HDL, HDL is considered the good cholesterol, and then high triglycerides. So if your triglycerides are high, up over 100, your LDL is high, and your HDL is low, like under 50, that's a sign that you have this terrible triad. That's associated with something called insulin resistance, and that is a strong risk factor for developing metabolic syndrome, developing atherosclerosis, and dying of heart disease. So we wanna make sure that's not the case. Also, when we look at the type of LDL particles, the size of the LDL particles makes a big difference. And there are two main patterns we look at, pattern A and pattern B. We know pattern A are very large LDL particles. They're called large, fluffy LDL particles. They have more vitamin E associated with them, so more protective they're more protective from oxidative stress. The pattern B are very small LDL particles. And these very small LDL particles will actually slip into the internal lining of the blood vessel, the endothelial lining, slip into little crevices where they'll recruit, the, 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 they'll actually, uh, almost like a magnet, pull macrophages, part of our immune system over there, and create inflammation and arterial damage, which can cause hypertension, and overall arterio as well as atherosclerosis and increase our risk of heart disease. So the pattern A are good, right? Actually having large fluffy LDL particles is very cardioprotective, whereas having small dense LDL particles is a strong risk factor for developing cardiovascular disease. And so one way you can know if you have large fluffy LDL particles, the pattern A versus the pattern B, is looking at your triglyceride to HDL ratio. Triglyceride to HDL ratio should always be under two and ideally close to one. And so what that, what that means is if your triglycerides, let's say they are 90 and your HDL is 45, that would be a two to one ratio or two overall, okay? Ideally, you want that under two and close to one. So let's say your triglycerides were 70 and your HDL was 70, that's good, right? That's a one to one ratio of triglyceride HDL, that's a sign that you have the pattern A large fluffy LDL particles. Let's say your levels were 150 triglycerides and you had 50 HDL. So 150 to 50, that's a three to one ratio. That's a sign you have pattern B, the atherosclerosis, 
sclerotic type of LDL particles. So look at your triglycerides, look at your HDL, find that ratio, that's what you should be looking at there. Now, what are some other reasons why LDL may be very high? Well, typically the main reasons are gonna be number one, insulin resistance. Number two could be hypothyroidism. We know thyroid hormone is really important for the liver's ability to uptake LDL out of the bloodstream and be able to utilize the cholesterol to produce bile. So when we don't have enough thyroid hormone, we're not going to be able to produce bile as effectively, and we're not gonna be able to clear out LDL from the bloodstream, which means we're gonna have elevated levels of LDL. Also, thyroid hormone is actually very important for activating the LDL receptor at the cell to uptake the cholesterol from the LDL. And so without that, it's almost like insulin resistance where you end up with higher amounts of LDL, but they're not actually getting into the cell and depositing the precious cargo that they're bringing. So hypothyroidism is a big issue there. And a lot of people have hypothyroidism or subclinical uh, thyroid issues where it hasn't been fully diagnosed as a thyroid problem, but it's still elevated. You're not getting enough of the, the active T3, free T3, that actually interacts with the liver to help produce bile and interacts with the cell membrane to help upregulate uh, or to uptake the cholesterol into the cell membrane. And so it may not be flagged on the test, but that individual may be dealing with that, and their doctor instead gives them a statin drug to lower their cholesterol levels because he sees it high. And that's obviously not the way to treat that. And so that, those are two big factors. Also inflammation and oxidative stress. We talked about smoking, really any high toxin exposure. Maybe you're exposed to mold and mycotoxins. Maybe you're exposed to heavy metals. Maybe you're exposed to different occupational chemicals. Maybe you are working in lawn care and you're spraying herbicides like glyphosate. Maybe you are a hairdresser and you're spraying you know, all different types of chemicals on people's hair and breathing that in. Therefore, that's gonna elevate your LDL because it's helping sequester and try to remove those toxins. So if you're exposed to toxins, that's a big factor. Maybe you have a bacterial infection. Maybe it's leaky gut and dysbiosis in your gut and you have H. pylori or you have um, Klebsiella or some sort of infection in your gut that's gonna drive up your LDL particles. Maybe, um, you have had trauma, so maybe you were in a car accident or you had a fall. If you've had trauma, part of the healing process is the body actually needs to increase that LDL, and so you're naturally gonna see that. Maybe you have like a stealth infection that you're not really aware of. Perhaps you had a root canal in your, in your mouth, but the root canal wasn't fully sterilized and it's harboring bacteria, and, and that bacteria is releasing endotoxins into the bloodstream. That can drive up your LDL. So we should be asking, if your LDL is elevated, we should be asking, why is it elevated? Those are all big factors that we need to look at. There's also another class, uh, classification of individuals. We call these lean mass hyper responders. These are individuals that are actually very lean. They have a low body fat percentage, low BMI, very fit. They're on a very low carb diet, ketogenic style diet. And when they do that, their body shifts into like a high primed fat burning metabolism. And part of getting more fats into the cell for energy production, the LDL will actually go up. And these individuals, you, what you'll see is very high LDL. Sometimes their LDL will be 300, right? Extremely high. Their HDL will always be high, up over 80, okay? And then their triglycerides will be low, under 70. And these individuals look very metabolically healthy, but their LDL is super high, and their doctors oftentimes freak out about this. But this has actually been shown to be a healthy response called a lean mass hyperresponder uh, phenotype. And these individuals are very metabolically healthy. Their insulin levels are low, they have low inflammatory levels, and so they're healthy. And so for those individuals, they shouldn't worry about those high LDL particles. Um, because it's not an issue. So again, always looking at your triglycerides and your HDL, that's always really, really key. And then trying to ask yourself, why is my LDL elevated? Is it because I'm in this phenotype of lean mass hyper responder and I'm on this very low carb diet and my body's trafficking more fat for fuel? Perhaps that's the case. Otherwise, we gotta think about it. What does your thyroid look like? What is your fasting insulin? Are you insulin resistant? Do you have excess visceral fat? 
Are you under a lot of stress? That's another thing that I didn't talk about. But if you're under a lot of stress, your cholesterol levels will go up. Have you recently had surgery? Have you had a lot of trauma, physical, mental, emotional trauma uh, in your life recently that would perhaps cause that, that LDL to go up? Do you have some sort of infection? Maybe you've had um, oral, like maybe you've had some sort of uh, work in your mouth, right? Uh, from root canals. Maybe you had your wisdom teeth taken out. It's harboring infection in there. Maybe you have gingivitis. Those can all increase your overall LDL levels. Maybe you've got a bacterial infection in your gut. So these are all things that you need to be considering when it comes to high LDL and not just running out and trying to lower your LDL. Running out and trying to lower your LDL is actually a problem. Blaming cholesterol for you know, basically inflammation and oxidative stress is not a good approach. It's kind of like blaming firefighters for a fire in your neighborhood because the firefighters were there trying to put it out. Obviously the firefighters, they weren't causing the fire. They were just there trying to protect the house and protect the individuals in the house and save the house. And that's really what cholesterol is doing. So what we need to do is rethink that and look at what potential root cause factors may be increasing the LDL. Is it actually a problem? And um, you know, what can we do to help create balanced lipid levels? But in general, when I just see LDL elevated with triglycerides and HDL you know, in good ratios, then I don't get concerned about that, um, you know, that lipid panel. But instead I start looking at other panels uh, and trying to look at what is the overall inflammation oxidative stress load? What does the insulin levels look like? What do thyroid levels look like? What is this person's history? Have they had a history of a lot of you know, oral health uh, issues? Have they had a history of surgeries, right? Trauma, different things like that. And could this LDL, this elevated LDL, be a response to the healing process in the body? So hopefully you guys got a lot out of this video. Please share it with anybody that you know and that you care about.